cinco. Okay. Got it. Thank you so much. Welcome to the uh, Finance Oversight Committee meeting of um, November 15, 2023. And now it's uh, 6 o'clock. And I will go ahead and uh, in effect say uh, a roll call. Um, Councilwoman Washington. Here. Member Angela Ash. Here. Dr. Armstrong is absent. Ex officio um, city manager Grubb. Here. Uh, member, member Dave Marcus. Present. Lakeisha Swanson. Reported yeah. she would be absent. And ex officio Mayor Cobble is in the building. He's not in the room yet. And Council Member George Turner. Present. Chair of the meeting. First item on the agenda was the call to order and the roll call and public comment. There's no one here from the public to make comments. Anyone know if any public comments being sent in that we need to address? Hearing none, we will move on from the public comments and uh, speak to the last meeting uh, agenda. I'm sorry, the, the minutes in the last meeting. That was combined with another meeting, and we waited for all of those um, documents to be uh, put together. And hopefully, they'll be ready by the time we have another meeting. Uh, we do need to get the minutes from each meeting and be reviewed by this body <coughs> before they are published as the final minutes. We're checking them to see if uh, anything has been sent from another area. So that is the last meeting involved the finance committee, uh, the transportation committee, uh, bus committee, and is there one more? I, I believe that was it. No, I think parts of the bottom. I think it's this way. Oh, and parts as well. So once those minutes are available, we will send them to you and hopefully we can get them approved before the year. Oh, there they are. Hello. Page or two. Well, we're not going to spend time going through them now, but we will definitely send them to all the committee members um, later on this evening and make them available. Thank you very much for pointing that out. And are we going to have a uh, member of staff with us to take minutes or notes this evening, or are we just going to get the recording? We don't have any staff. Okay, then the recording will be fine. Just fine. That's it. Record. Very well. Okay, first item on the agenda is the FY23 budget. Uh, let me just uh, pause and say that. We tried to move this meeting uh, to a time before we approve the FY24 budget so we could get comments on the FY24 budget. But I know uh, Member Marcus had already made extensive comments on the budget. I did speak to our uh, member, Ash, and she had an opportunity to talk to the city manager, yeah. had an opportunity to talk to the city manager, and I don't think it quite uh, came together, but um comments could be made. Um, there were a couple of public hearings on the budget. So most members of this committee took an opportunity to make some comments. That may have been some who didn't get their comments in before the budget was adjusted, when it was adopted. But understand that you can make comments on the budget at any point in time. And just because it's been adopted doesn't mean that it is closed and can never be touched again. It is available to be addressed um, throughout the year. So if you still have comments or questions about the FY24 budget, uh, continue to uh, either email them to the city manager, uh, set times to meet with the city manager about the FY24 budget, 
uh, which we did adopt on uh, <clears throat> just Monday, uh, two days ago. So uh, that's why we moved from the FY24 budget and going back to the FY23 budget, which is what uh, we are under now. And that is to look at the reports that are associated with the FY23 budget and decide or uh, discuss if there are things we need to uh, bring to the attention of council and uh, staff. So that being said, I want to try to display the report of the FY23 budget. Are you going to be able to do that, Madam City Manager? Yes. Um, I would like to, if you will, just go, if we start just from the current one. When I say current, it is as of today. Um, the other ones are displayed on the website now. They're updated on the website. Um, we did have some delay in getting those uploaded to the, to the website, but those are there. Um, Do I need to share the, screen in order for you to show what you have? No, I'm going to um, <coughs> um, I'm going to share my screen from okay. the from the. Essentially, the yes no question. <coughs> uh, one of the recommendations that I think for a study to conduct with housing. No, it's not an official plan yet yeah, for recommendation. It did not get officially budgeted in the 24. Um, what I did say is that once um, the economic development director does the work plan for that, for no, I'm thinking of film study. Once that is official and, uh, and adopted, um, you are referring to the recommendation in the economic development plan, correct? Yes. Um, once that is official and has been adopted, then we would move forward with those recommendations at that time. Um, but where I was going with that is, he's also working on that film and entertainment study. And I know that mid-year, he'll have a work plan for that. And then when we come back and make mid-year budget adjustments, I'm um, already thinking that we'll have to do one for that. And then also one for the film and entertainment study as well. Because it was not, it was not one of the things that was budgeted, even though it was in the draft version of the document. And the second question is whether uh, you ended up adding we did not end up adding any additional code enforcement. That was one of the things I did talk to the council. Um, they are willing, they were willing to give uh, some additional time to make some assessment. As I mentioned before, we did add two positions for 2023. However, we it took um, majority of the year to get fully staffed. And then we had something happen here recently and we still are short, are short one officer. So we, in the, in the course of the year, we lost two officers um, through separation. And then um, we also had to recruit for two. So part of the year, we still only had the five. And so we haven't had enough time, but one of the things that I um, have been doing is communicating with, our, with Al, our code enforcement director, is to come up with a plan. And I also want to see the data that suggests that we have systematically looked district by district in terms of what we're doing and okay. how has that needle moved, but also making sure that um, the documentation is there and see also the next step, how it moves to court. And are we seeing an impact on that? And I think um, at this point, we can probably all answer that question. Um, so that's where I want to be able to get some metrics and some data to support whichever decision we go to. Can I send you a framed picture of Rogers Lake Road to your office? Um, mm, sure. Um, but since you mentioned Rogers Lake, I know that um, I spoke with Al and his team is going out there <coughs> this Friday. Um, and they are taking a, a holistic approach to that and um, looking parcel by parcel to see if we can make some, some, some movement there as well. Thank you. That's it. Well, Mr. Ash, I know you had some questions mm -hmm. about the FY24 budget. And that has been adopted. The question is still valid. Uh, we can uh, deal with it. So yeah. there's, there's a thing called adjustment. Oh, the well, thing no, is, questions. Yeah, with the budget, 
you know, we said it and we, um, it, it's a it's a guiding document, but it's not set in, not necessarily, it's set in stone, but it's not, we can always come back and make adjustments. If it's anything, it may be some things that we, um, just like when what Dave asked, it's not necessarily um, in the beginning, we didn't budget for it, but it's not to say we can't make a mid-year adjustment because I I'm feel pretty strong that we're going to make several this time, especially with another uh, attempt at moving additional services in-house. And for right now, I, I actually did go back and look at the workshop session, but um, the only one outstanding question at this point, I think I had a question about sponsorship under the... Um, the Council. Council. I understand what the sponsorship line um, is. It's really detailed out where sometimes the council may want to sponsor um, a youth group or sponsor somebody doing um, uh, uh, that one just comes to mind. Like, but sponsorships like that where they're sponsoring a, a team to go somewhere or um, something like that. Uh, uh, I know when the baseball, baseball team, team won the championship mm -hmm. and they were going to the White House uh, they needed funds. And, okay, and so they those are the, the, the side of the road connected. Oh, I yeah. see. So they've so allocated the schools within yeah. the district. We may not sponsor it all, but mm -hmm. we can chip in sometimes to help with that. Okay, okay. And, uh, I think it's a good thing for our youth to try to sponsor some of those activities. Okay, okay. Okay, that's, that's what it's Okay, but, yeah, most of it. Um, Anything else? Yeah, that's really only anything else to close out in what for before. And we'll close it out with just comments on it. Um, not really. I think um, the biggest, uh, well, I'm not going to say the biggest thing, but uh, obviously the secondary transition of services in house is going to be very impactful. The public safety liaison is going to be very impactful. I also want to look at, um, um, we've talked a lot about. Um, the processes and our internal processes in terms of development services, and we're still looking at those. Um, but I also want to look at uh, fire marshal and what we can do to assist there, because in as we're looking at the processes, that is one of the things that is really um, hindering us um, in terms of being more efficient. Um, and so we want to see what we can do to make some adjustments to that. But that um, doesn't necessarily have a fiscal impact. It may. Um, but that is one of the things that I also have on the top of my list, probably right underneath the public safety liaison. Can we move the fire marshal in house without the fire department? Um, there are some some things that we can do um, uh, with the cab and and outside of that. Um, that my building department, the building chief of the official, is helping to work through that. We're looking at it. Good. Um, but those are, if I would say big things, the transition of, of personnel, um, uh, transition of services, the, the, and the personnel piece that goes along with that. And if as successful as we can be in the beginning of the year, when we come back to make the mid-year budget adjustments, we'll have the funding for um, some of the other things that we talked about. Um, the arborist is is funded. I do want you to know that it is funded under um, planning zone and professional services. Um, so we are, we have taken, that, that was one of the suggestions before, so we did look at that Great. and we're able to come up with, with um, something that would work there. And then aside from that, we just, um, uh, I think those are the only departments, of course, um, finance has asked, asked for several positions, but it's because we, um, while we felt like we were good revenue and procurement wise, just having a solid accounting staff. Is essential. Um, so we did put some additional funding there for a couple more positions there. And we'll see how that goes. Yeah, and some of the questions I would ask would not be necessarily a committee question. It was more of a council question about your staff and in the finance area to make sure that we get what we need out in time of fashion. I know you were the uh, deputy uh, director of finance and uh, other positions that needed to be filled. Because a lot of what we want to talk about for our reports, are we getting these reports published <clears throat> in a timely fashion? And we can come up with a lot of excuses, and excuses are just that. Although I could take it as a reason, some might see it as an excuse. And 
that get to be uh, a little issue. So we want to make sure we resolve all of that uh, from a council perspective, but from a uh, committee perspective, uh, the reports that we do have, I think it's something that we want to talk about. Are we up to date with our report? Mm -hmm. uh, and if we're not up to date with our report, the report that we do have, uh, let's discuss what we do have. And council has to resolve getting them up to date. Yeah. So, so we, um, now we do have up through September on the website. Um, I just have, actually, I'm looking at the one um, for October. Um, but you mentioned the challenge that we have had this year um, with our deputy finance director. Um, in addition to that, the finance director position also. Um, so I'm not offering any excuses. They were delayed. We do have them out there now. Um, and we are working to try to get additional staff. But in conversations that I've had um, with other people in the industry, other people in finance, as well as GMA, and when I went to the International City Council, I mean, City Managers Association meetings, um, the country is struggling with accountants, period, because there are um, uh, not a lot of people entering into the field and a lot of people are exiting. And so we're challenged with that. Um, one of the things that people have also brought to our attention, which we already know, is our audits and stuff like that. But that's also as a result of a lot of companies are not looking at governmental accounting in terms of doing audit work on that. So then that is also um, is also playing a part in um, what we're doing. So we are um, actively trying to recruit. Um, we are getting ready to do another solicitation for internal auditors. Um, and then, as, as as you all know, our external auditors are working through um, the audits now. I have a follow up on that. So, speaking of since you brought up the mm -hmm. internal audit, so which audit are they? Where are they? Which audit year? And we are still in 2021. Oh. 2021. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah, I don't um, understand. Um, you know what? Yeah, there have been um, significant delays in um, on our external auditors. Um, there was a period when we um, did a solicitation and um, we didn't necessarily, they didn't, wasn't necessarily, uh, we had some inactivity as the solicitation was out there. But once we stopped that, because they uh, they stopped working while we had our solicitation out. Um, and I mentioned to them that regardless of us having a solicitation out for the 2022 audit, that shouldn't have had any effect on 21 because you can't go to, you can't have work in one audit year. You can't work in the next audit year until you've completed the, the previous one. Oh, yeah, that's, that's an ethical issue. Uh -huh. And so that should not have played a part in what they were doing for us. And they were they were contracted to work on that particular Correct. year. Yes, sir. You put a solicitation because it happens all the time. Mm -hmm. They put a solicitation. You put a solicitation, and they stop working. Mm -hmm. I mean, we because y'all put a solicitation out. In essence, I'm inferring that I'm there was a time period where the work was stopped, yeah. and then also, um, uh, we have had some challenges with getting finding the information for 21. Right, because it's also still associated with um, previous administration and, and just absolutely trying to find the documents that they're looking for. So, but we have turned in everything. Let me oh. let me go tell you some glimmer of the news. We have turned in everything and we're just responding to their questions. Exactly. We hope to have, best case scenario, we would hope to have, um, have this completed by the end of the year. Um, I guess worst case scenario it will be um, January, February of next year. So the RFP solicitation is then out for 2022? It was. We do not have anything actively out now for external audit. We're getting ready to put another one out for internal audit. When we did it previously, we didn't get any results. So y'all going to wait till you finish, they finish that work and then put another solicitation or they're going to be the firm that does the 2022? Do you know? I, I oh. can't say that at this time. Oh, okay. I wouldn't say that stuff in the middle of the year is a great conversation. 
we're trying to get caught up. That is our ultimate goal is to get caught up. Has that affected any other fund any funding? I don't know if y'all getting any federal because we've got single audit or yeah, anything. Yeah, at this point it has not. But um as you know, um that's one of the first things people look at when you look at grants, when you look at the federal programs and some of the dollars that we want to go after. That's why this is at the top of everybody's okay. list in the well, myself and the finance director. This is at the top of our list on trying to get this resolved. Um and then also making sure that we can um, do everything we can to get 22 as quickly as we can, because that should be a little bit better, uh, well, a lot better in terms of getting the information because that, you know, the city had transitioned at that point. Yeah, I've never heard of such a, that in, what you mentioned about an incident. And I know the firm you're speaking of, of that behavior. So why would that happen? But, okay. And, you know, and I will say, I mean, we did have, um, it, it's just been a, 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 a challenge in okay. general, and I'm not, I don't want to say that it was all external, but I am saying that did add a layer of complexity in turn, and then internally trying to find the documentation. But what's twenty one is complete twenty two should be. Mm -hmm. I don't, don't want to say simple because the audit is never simple. Yeah, but uh, it should not have the delay mm -hmm. that you had the twenty one. Right, right. It should go. Well, technically, the vendor that we currently have, we had a one plus four on those. So technically, they are, unless we did a solicitation and changed it, they would, our current vendor would be the one that is providing that service. We did a solicitation. Oh. And we got no, we okay. didn't get any new results back from that. Well, that should be no delay in service. No, no. No. Starting it, no. Shouldn't be any delay. Yeah. One, one last thing. So they were there, you said something about for four years. They had a renewal. The current vendor, did you say they? Mm -hmm. In 20. Was they are 21? It was either 20 or 21. Um, we did a contract, but all of our, most, well, let me just say most. Most of our contracts are one year uh -huh. with four options. Okay. And, okay. and that's just our standard language. Okay. So they did 20, they did 21. Mm -hmm. um, and so technically they would be in line to do okay. the remainder, unless we do something different, amend the contract or cancel. Okay. Well, not even amend it, but mm -hmm. cancel it and, and do another solicitation. Okay. But I know that has been publicly has been, a, a lot of people has questions about mm -hmm. that. We're not trying to hide it it's, mm -hmm. as a matter of fact. No, we have not. And we are working very hard to get that caught up, get those caught up. So there's something, I and mean, I'm just asking a note or something on the website. That way you don't keep continuing up, up audit pending due to something. I don't know. Uh, I mean, all we could say is pending because I don't want to uh, I mean, contact any, um, any vendor. Especially no, not in that sense, currently. but just yeah. so um, it just looks like it's not done. There's no anything. note about it. There's nothing said, but um, yeah, we could, pending we could. complete. I don't know. Pending, I guess, check with legal to see what you can put, but. Pending completion or because by nothing being said, I guess people are going to continue to ask, like, what's going on as if it's being ignored, but maybe it might it's be not possible. ignored. <laughs> and I know, yeah. I know it's not, <laughs> but if something is on the website, you know, you will, hey, 2022, 21 on it, blah, 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 something of that nature might be helpful. I will, um, I made a note of that and I will. Now, do you have a deputy finance? I'm going to make sure I'm understanding those positions are filled. No, we do not. Um, okay. Mia Wilson passed. Oh. And now we do have a finance director, Keisha. I don't think she was included on this meeting. Right? Uh -huh. um, okay. And so we are down a position. And then we're also, um, one of the other things that we all asked but didn't ask. Um, the other thing that we're working on is transitioning our financial system to Tyler Technologies, which is um, going to help us tremendously, but it is a big burden on us right now, trying to manage, trying to implement, and then um, for the first probably six months of next year, we'll be running in two separate systems and, you know, keeping track of everything. So it's going to be um, quite the task, and we are as soon as we get the position approved, we will be recruiting for accountants and other staff to be able to help. Okay. 
And I'm going to ask uh, your background, or your resume. What's your background? <laughs> What's your background? Is it remote? I'm not sure it works remote now. <laughs> that's, that's what everybody's asking. <laughs> that is, can't do that with accounting that much. <laughs> But um, I can appreciate that, not just for county, but I'm saying other positions as well. I, for what happened to the people after COVID, they just um, disappeared. You can't find workers in some of these critical uh, areas. But um, I'm sure we'll do what we got to do to make it happen. You know, there's nobody here to help us make everything uh, up to date and transparent. So, um, I guess I can kind of hit two birds with one stone if I show the FY24, because then we the actuals for 23 are in there. Okay. Um, okay. So, um, so in column E are the actuals for 23. Um, and if you notice, the real property tax is like a, is, um, half of what it should be, but that's because we're also in the middle of tax season where they're collecting um, um, tax bills. Um, but everything else is pretty much in line with where we would expect it to be. And if you look down at just the general property taxes here, um, we budgeted three and we're at 2.3. So we're about 1.2 off, but we expect to get that with the um, uh, property taxes. Yeah. Um, when you look at franchise fees, um, uh, we are where we should be here. I think they, we're still waiting on um, uh, snap and shows to, uh, to pay theirs. And I, I asked um, our Revenue, I mean, yeah, our revenue manager earlier to um, let me know where we are with that. So, and that's the only thing that's missing from this one. Sales and use tax, I mean, select, yeah, sales and use tax, we are, oh, uh, have uh, exceeded where we, where we expected to be for the budget on um, the alcohol and the liquor by the drink. And so, uh, <laughs> liquor by the drink is a little bit short, but the other one, we are above. So, we, Last year and the year before, we kept talking about revenue recovery, but part of this is tied to that because as we get, and you'll see the, the same correlation in our business licenses, um, as we are re making those type of recoveries and then also correlating that to businesses that do that, serve alcohol, um, we, we're able to see an increase there. Yes. Yes. Do you remember the discussion of the council about the treehouse short term rental? Mm -hmm. He said he's been in business for several years, uh, had no problems. Are we going after uh, taxes on that revenue and the business license? I don't want to speak specifically on anybody's property, but we do, when we when um, things have been identified, we do uh, make revenue recovery attempts. Great. Um, with that, either how far back can you go? Is that a three years? <laughs> And then again, here we are with the business occupational tax. We budgeted 1.6 and we're at 1.8. Um, our insurance premium tax, we actually ended up with much more than we expected. We were over, uh, over about a half a million dollars. Um, financial institutions tax, this is another one that I've asked our revenue manager to take a look at and make sure that um, uh, the financial institutions are paying those because last year we did a huge revenue recovery, as you can see here, and we just have not seen any activity here. Um, so I've asked them to take a look at that. Business license, I mean, alcohol beverage, current year business license is where 195, we said 195 and that's where we are. Um, so there's, and permitting, we said building permits, we said 750, we had 713, and we're in, in, in uh, the 11th month, so we're looking mm -hmm. good there. And overall, um, all of those are very close to what we budgeted um, in our developmental services, so that also is a good indicator. Um, let's 
Okay, what else do we have? Just our general government stuff, taxes, our field permit um, is, it is down, but um, I'm thinking shortages with um, with everything that was going on in the film industry, you can kind of see that. Um, our activity fees are not quite where we wanted, wanted them to be, but this also, at the time, uh, I believe we did an estimate last year based on us us doing, on the city doing um, the aquatics management, and we didn't get there on that, but we are attempting to do that again next year, where the aquatic center will be managed by city staff and all the programs um, for that. But so we were, um, we're a little off there. Um, other general government, um, our interest is much higher than what we put it at last year is because we went back and um, did some additional um, finance work so that we could get a better interest rate on our fund balance. And so we were able to get um, a significant increase there. And so if you get down here and you look at our final revenue dollars, we're at 14.3 and we said 15, we know we're gonna get another million dollars from um, property tax. So we'll be right where we said we're gonna be. Um, the FY24, we have a $16.9 million budget. And that's still based off of pretty conservative estimates based off previous years and what we were receiving. But as you all just saw in our financial, not financial institutions, um, um, lost my train of thought, but in our insurance premium tax, we were 500, that they sent $500,000 more than what we budgeted, a half a million dollars. So we expect in the next year or two to be comfortably at a $17 million budget. And essentially we would have gone from this $12 million budget you see here to a $17 million budget in three years. Um, so that is that. And I'll kind of quickly go down the departmentals. If we didn't, all of the departmentals, there's nobody that is over budget, if you, if you will, um, but there are a few adjustments that need to be made and you'll see those as we scroll through this workers comp. I just need to figure out what that is and I'm not sure at the moment, but I'm, I know it's misplaced. Um, so this is mayor and council and I'll just kind of go down to the bottom because the, the bottom, um, which is here's what was budgeted and here's where we are. So they are under budget for this for, for right now. Um, we had a couple of things that happened in the city manager's office. A um, and I'm speaking specifically from professional services. This is, is kind of low because we had MGT who did our compensation study as well as the executive recruitment and both of those should have come out of this budget and I believe they were charged to HR. But I have asked us to ask staff to take a look at that. Um, but again, um, we have gone majority of the year without a um, half of the year without a city manager and the full year without a deputy and that's uh, reflected by the low expenditure here. City clerk's office um, is essentially the same way. They are um, they are fully staffed uh, and they have they're about a hundred thousand dollars hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars less and we only have one month left. left. So I'm kind of showing you all of these just to say that we are right about where we thought we would be. Um, engineering, um, this is another line item, this professional services. I think that um, while I know we budgeted 600, I know it should not be 800. I think there may be a couple of things that are out of place there, but once we make those corrections, um, they also will be um, in balance before we end the year, we'll also go back and um, take a look at all of the transactions um, to make sure we have them in the right place. So you said this is the October report? Mm -hmm. Okay, so they said we have two months left. <coughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
public safety, we haven't done anything yet. And then finance. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, finance, the same thing. So part of this 84 needs to go to the city manager's office. But this is also where you know, if we need any additional uh, assistance, this is where that would come from. Um, but again, uh, 1 million expense, 1.4 budgeted, really close there. Uh, HR is the same thing. Um, we are trying to do some additional staff development type activities um, for staff. Again, our this is one that we're going to have to do a, a budget adjustment for. Um, our legal fees, um, we have a lot going on. <laughs> With legal, so that we will have to make that adjustment. Um, it's external, internal. Well, I'm saying external. Um, we have our the city attorneys are through a firm. Oh, okay, that's right. Okay, yeah. okay. Is there any line item for for recoveries from vacancies? No, sir. Internal audit. We uh, had Elliot Davis. They did complete an audit. One of the audit audit um, work plan items for FY23, um, and then they informed us that they would no longer be doing um, audit work for municipalities. Right. So we did a solicitation. Um, it was not. Successful, so we are getting ready to do another solicitation so we can get somebody else on board um, and then hopefully start the year off where they will start back um, with the strategic three year strategic plan that was already presented that was already um, put together by Elliot Davis. We already have a three year strategic plan and the work plan, we just need another internal auditor to come in and move us through that. Like Who threw out the plan, the work plan for the the, internal, the audit. internal auditors did it and we reviewed it. We and then the council approved it. So how do they know? So they developed their own work plan as far as what to go audit and what should be reviewed, internal audit, um, internal audit, or is there where is that we, driven by? Well, it's driven by we said what we the, the areas that we wanted to look at. Okay. I mean just a big overall because I mean we know inspections, permits um finding obviously finance they're looking at that that kind of stuff all the time but then also just because everything is so new go ahead and audit this and then just tell us where the deficiencies are mm -hmm. right and that's essentially what they've been doing um as an example um one of them one uh one of the things they just recently said was we needed to um the documentation in citizen serve but that's one thing I've been saying all along, but then they just came back and said it. So now we are, I mean, every time I have a meeting, I'm saying, make sure we put this in the system. So we um, need to get that to council so they can review everything and then we can be done with this, with that section of it. Um, and then there are some other things that they said that we had already identified, but we need another set of eyes to come and say, hey, you know, you may want to look at this, especially with the city transitioning from a third party. And some of the things that we've identified um, have obviously have a fiscal impact. Some of them we can recover and some of them we will not be able to. Is that work plan? And that's in the RFP mm -hmm. for the solicitation to yeah. see what the work plan looks like. Mm -hmm. yeah. <coughs> Economic development. Um, it's still pretty much the same there. Um, And I guess, long story short, without just going deep diving in all of these, aside from like legal, um, and that's the only one that jumps out, Every everything else is within what we expected it to be. Um, but we do have significant legal costs. And I don't want to go into detail about as to why that is. I don't think you all know. Yeah. Um, uh, parks is turning things around and, and hiring staff and um, really getting at trying to manage the, the facilities as well as the, um, the ground. So they just hired, got uh, facilities 
uh, person in a parks operation. So they're ramping up to to really do some good things come the spring. Everything look, should look different. Um, and then we have planning and zoning, code enforcement. Um, again, if you look, these numbers are we're under budget everywhere. And when I get down here to the end, you'll see. Um, right now, we're about five million dollars under. Hey, well, my biggest thing is that I wanted to make sure that we had the documents available mm -hmm. for the public to review as well as council. Um, such that uh, they can get the answer that they're looking for. And uh, not just saying uh, it's six months behind. Uh, One that you had for security wasn't nothing I promised for. It could have been, oh, I'm sorry. I'm not sure what Just department it is. It should be. It should be, um, be up under something else other than security. Mm -mm. No, I was going to say. Um, no, it wasn't far. Was it at the bottom? Yeah, just okay. before you ended. Okay, let me go back. Um, if it was. Oh, oh here. Like uh -huh. It's in code enforcement because they they um they don't have any. It's through either court when they do court. Mm -hmm. Um, and if you notice, there's nothing there the whole time. Um, when we ran this, we didn't do, um, we didn't remove the zeros. So it's included in code enforcement? No, I'm saying there is no security. There is no amount there. So co a code enforcement doesn't have security. But it just pulled all of the, um, this report that I ran, I, this pulled all of the line items, regardless of if it had a dollar amount or not. So it is no dollar amount for security for code enforcement, nor would there be. If that because their stuff goes to municipal court and then court does the scheduling of security. So uh municipal court, uh city events uh has security attached to those. Okay. So with regard to I guess a lot of the I'm I'm just gonna lie, I'm not sure vacant positions and such. So um now you see I had a study done of Salary study done, and so it, has it turned out that salaries are competitive with other cities of similar size, or what did the study reveal? Yeah, we are about 13% above market, which means we are paying very well um, in relation to other municipalities. Um, I know that a couple of other cities have reached out because now that we've done one, um, others are doing one. Um, because everybody wants to be competitive from just the compensation portion. And that doesn't even really start going into, I mean, it does. Um, we looked at benefits too, but um, when you start looking at us regionally, we are very competitive in terms of what we offer. Good. Okay. Um, we know where it is. And you said that the September is in public. I thought that. Right. Uh, when is it going to publish October? Um, probably the next day or so, we are, uh, the finance director has um, given some uh, additional time for staff to be able to um, get everything together uh, before we close out the month, and that will push the reporting piece back just a little bit. But it will be consistent, but it may not be on the 5th of the month, it's probably going to be on the 15th to the 20th of the month. All right, so we can look forward. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Excellent. Thank you very much. And the um, any other questions on that? That's FY24, I mean, FY23. That's five million down. How much? How do you think we're going to end it? Right. <laughs> okay. Um, I, we do want to kind of move on so we can get on to the next uh, event. I'm going to hold you guys tomorrow. Uh, the other item we want to talk about was committee structure. Uh, we're having trouble uh, not just with uh, the finance committee, but with other committees within the city uh, in terms of getting the quorum. I think during the pandemic, people got used to meeting by uh, meeting virtually, and we had great attendance uh, virtually. 
uh, but since we've been meeting uh, in person again, uh, we've had, like I said, some serious issues with uh, calling meetings and less than half of the members to show up and have uh, involved a lot of staff time and cost uh, to simply say, yeah, no meeting, go home. Um, part of that may well be because of the number of committees that we have. And when people signed up for these committees, uh, they didn't realize how things had changed and they haven't been so getting it yet. Um, we suggested, and I know we're going to do with some of these committees, we're going to combine some of the committees, I mean, two or three of them, to become one committee. And uh, I think it'll work a whole lot better. And uh, we may well get uh, a lot greater participation. Uh, the finance committee, the question is what happens to the finance committee? Uh, what other structure can we uh, take? And uh, we don't mind borrowing ideas from other cities or counties or whomever as to how they structure their finance committee. And I know most of the finance committees are um, basically internal committees and uh, uh, maybe an external uh, oversight. And that's what this is called, an oversight committee. So this is what we need to probably take a closer look at. It's that oversight committee. What input do you have in terms of making suggestions are you just the oversight to look for things that may or may not be uh, timely or uh, done according to the way uh, the process calls for it to be and simply blow the whistle, become whistleblowers of sorts. And say, ah, that's not fair, it's not the way the uh, process says it should be done. And uh, we just need to take another look at the structure. So I wanted to get input from you guys as to how you feel about the current structure? Uh, are we achieving what you expected us to achieve? Do you think we can do this better? Uh, because uh, we need to deal with this real soon because uh, at the end of December, all committees uh, kind of kind of terminated and uh, they need to be reconstituted. Um, give us some feedback or think about it and call us or email us or whatever uh, because we're going to seriously look at the finance committee. I know we need to make it heavily uh, loaded with folks from the finance uh, department uh, to be up to speed on everything that's been discussed about what's happening in finance. So, um, first, there are a couple of things that I think that we have. You know, we Gosh, for six months, could not get a meeting to get out of the committee. Mm -hmm. you know, the I tend to think that some of the committees are, not that they're too large, but they it ends up with five people showing up. And it's the same five people, or four or six, whatever it is. And I'm thinking that the committees are composed of a smaller group of more dedicated and average people will get more meeting current. I also tend to wonder about the clock starting and how that impacts the people. As you know, 95% of the hired work outside the city. So getting back to be here through rush hour and almost certainly skipping a meal with your family is probably a deterrent to some people coming. And if we try to hold these meetings to 90 minutes, a 7.30 to 9 slot might work better. That's something to consider. The time. <clears throat> and then I think the third thing is whether the council people who are proposing or, or talking to people about being on a committee if they're really trying to get a really explicit commitment that, you know, once a month you're going to have your butt around the table at City Hall at 5.59 p.m. Um, I, I'm not sure that that happens as opposed to, hey, we, are you interested in being on today? And there's pressure to find someone. You just find someone. Is that someone? 
has a skill set in a particular area. Okay, something to consider. Yeah. Something else is going on as well. Uh, she will be soon we're going to have a meeting with our um, legislative delegation. And something I would like to really push them on, and that is virtual meetings for the non um, action bodies. These are advisory committees. You really don't make decisions that bind if you want to anything. Just make suggestions or advise council on certain matters. Can we make those meetings virtual? And well, yeah, if you're able to do that, that may well allow greater participation. So I will push that again. More virtual meetings for the non um, binding decision uh, advisory committees. So, but with the finance committee, um, I'm going to look at this in particular because there's a, I think, a special expectation from the finance committee. And since you mentioned that, when you say special expectation, because I'm still not clear right. from when we started about truly what the role is because a lot of time is after the fact or, you know what is truly uh, the input wanting from the finance committee and is it helpful is it helpful for you mm -hmm. to have this committee as a city manager um because it has no teeth per se um in the sense of that it can be like is there any other citizen inquiring about anything and come to a meeting and show up and ask questions at the podium or what have you but and I think I think you'll find that some citizens are very um, involved with what's going on, and they do keep track of the particular area that they have a I don't want to say expertise in, but mm -hmm. uh, some experience in, and uh, they are called uh, council to task when they see things that simply don't make sense or don't add up, mm -hmm. and, and and that should happen, right? Right. You know, and, and it helps to keep uh, us on our toes. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the finance committee. Uh, a lot of things happen, and I know Dave is always like, where's the agenda? And uh, I have to say, well, the agenda is not ready. Well, what if they think they get the agenda ready? It has to pass finance department. Mm -hmm. It has to pass the legal department and various other areas mm -hmm. before it is ready to be published. Mm -hmm. So uh, if we have a finance committee, and I know we listen to some of the other uh, municipalities or uh, county, they said certain things don't go on the, on the agenda until they are heard by the finance committee or by some other committee. And if you're going to do that, then they need to be mostly internal that can deal with it and deal with it in a hurry. Someone who's on the clock say, well, we need to review this document and make sure it's ready to go on the agenda, uh, which means you need to be in a position to be weekly if necessary. And that's why I say if it's an internal body, the finance committee, then you get the finance oversight group of citizens who kind of you know, look at that and see how well we're things. I mean, what's the, what's the optics? What does it look like? And no matter what you're dealing with in the real world, there's a perception to the external world. And that's the kind of feedback you need. Like what you see, the question you were asking, I thought was a very great question. But internally, those answers should have already been circulated. And that's why I'm looking at almost having two committees that say finance, mm -hmm. one is the finance oversight, then there's the internal finance operating committee. So those are just some of my thoughts. I could be way off, but uh, the way things are structured now, they're not working as smoothly as I think they could. Because the most cities have, I know what the county we didn't have an external body of any sort to, and right. but does other cities have an external finance committee? Which I don't think so. I, I haven't seen it be yeah. something uh, consistent that in, in my experience. Um, but I will say, in terms of when I was the finance director, the, the benefit of having this committee was we had so many policies that needed to be mm -hmm. reviewed. And so that was very, very helpful. Um, as a matter of fact, we um, want to come back and look back at the purchasing policy again. Um, so in that aspect, I think those the looking at reviewing policies, um, I think that was very helpful. Um, and, you think and just, ad hoc would work in a case like that? Well, that's mm -hmm. what I was going to say. Maybe mm -hmm. an ad hoc type of scenario mm -hmm. for 
I think it was very, I think they had their meeting. No, I apologize for that. I know it's, it's seven o'clock. We're trying to make another meeting. So, uh, is it seven o one? All right. Uh, did we miss anything that we really need to talk about? Then I thank y'all so much for coming to the meeting and Thanksgiving is next week. Anyone yeah. promise me? One promise. Yeah. All right. Okay. And y'all have a okay. happy Thanksgiving. Okay. And he is coming to an end, so we need to do a close out report and uh, we'll work on that. Thank y'all so much for your time. Yeah. It is valuable. I understand. Well, no, you got to leave me first. Okay. I'll uh, play tomorrow.